Hi everyone, this is our recent trip to the Adirondacks in upstate New York. This is our first time there. We took the route by Vermont instead of I-90 Mass Pike because I wanted to see Lake Champlain Bridge. Only I did not know that this is a very zigzaggy road. So we took I-87 South to Mass Pike on the way back home. If you don't like to drive in a zigzag road, don't take this route. And that's the new Lake Champlain Bridge that was opened in November 7, 2011. It replaces the old one that was built in 1929. The old one was demolished in 2009 due to safety concern. So for almost two years, there were no bridge connecting Vermont to New York State. It took us almost 5 hours to get to the Adirondacks from Boston via the Vermont route. This is our motel that we stayed in. It's pet friendly, clean, accessible to all the places we need to go, and more importantly, it has free coffee. Let me give you some fun facts about the Adirondacks. It's approximately 6 million acres. It's so big that you can put in Yellowstone, Everglades, and the Grand Canyon inside it. It's actually bigger than the state of Vermont, and it's one-fifth the size of the entire state of New York. That's why it's important to figure out what area you want to explore and book a hotel near it, or you'll be driving for hours in a zigzag road. In our first trip to the Adirondacks, we decided to explore the Lake Placid area. The Adirondack is located in the northeast part of the state of New York, bordering Vermont and Canada. It's a state park created in 1892. It's actually the biggest park in the lower 48 states, bigger than any national park except the ones found in Alaska. The Adirondack Park is best known for its expansive pristine forests, lakes, rivers, and outdoor recreation opportunities like fishing. Unlike a national park, the Adirondack Park has no entrance fee. And not it only contains public land, but private lands as well where people live year-round. Speaking of private lands, our first adventure in the Adirondack is the Ossible Chasm. Yes, you pronounce this as Ossible Chasm. It's a privately owned park. We purchased the classic tour. It actually has two parts. 
first is a hike through a scenic nature trail of the chasm on a natural stone walkways and bridges it has a lot of walking they said it's one mile but it seems like it's longer though it's a breathtaking experience they're doing a You see those guys below? That's the adventure trail where you have to walk and climb on those edges. This view by the bridge overlooking the falls is really pretty. The Osable Chasm is the oldest and largest natural attraction in the Adirondacks. It opened in 1870 and more than 10 million visitors have explored the chasm and the nature trails. We were on that bridge earlier. Again, that's the adventure trail and I don't think we'll be doing that in this visit. Aren't you afraid, Kelly? No. This is actually called by some people as the Little Grand Canyon of the East. The Osable Chasm is actually a sandstone gorge that was carved out 500 million years ago from the Cambrian period. At the end of the Ice Age, 10,000 years ago, the movement and subsequent melting of glaciers created a series of tunnels in the chasm.
Some of the rock formations have been given names such as Cathedral, the Devil's Oven, Elephant's Head, the Flume, Sentinel Rock, and Table Rock. At the end of the adventure trail is the rafting or tubing. The second part of the classic tour is you board a raft or float in a tube into the narrowest and deepest region of the Osable Castle. We did the lazy river tubing, they will give you a life vest, but keep in mind you will get very wet. So if you don't like to get wet around your butt area, do the rafting. You will still get wet but only on your feet. There's a part of this river that the current is very strong and fast. You will definitely get wet. The water is cold and I did not like the part. Um, kind of regret that I did not shoot the video because I was afraid the camera will get wet. Chris and Callie got stuck in that area and they have to paddle their way back. So after the lazy river tubing or rafting, there's a shuttle bus that would bring you back to the parking lot or you can just hike one mile back to the welcome center in very wet clothes. That afternoon, we went to Lake Placid area. The downtown area is called Lake Placid and the eight shape lake in the downtown area is called Mirror Lake. There's also a bigger lake just outside the downtown area and it's called Lake Placid. But the lake in the downtown area is Mirror Lake. I know it's confusing. Lake Placid is known for hosting two Winter Olympics, the 1932 Winter Olympics and the 1980 Winter Olympics. As a matter of fact, United States hosted four Winter Olympics. Two of them are in Lake Placid. Okay, the downtown area has a lot of stores like Cape Cod. And as usual, I bought a lot of souvenirs. <laughs> oh, I've heard that before. Mister? Mister? 
after. On our second day, we decided to do a little nature appreciation adventure. We drove to Topper Lake, about one hour drive from the Lake Placid area. On our way there, we passed by Saranac Lake. Our first stop is the Natural History Museum of the Adirondacks, or commonly known as the Wild Center. The Wild Walk is an elevated walkway which leads to some very cool pods like the Eagle Nest, the Spider Web, and to the treetops of the Adirondack Forest. It's designed to transform the way we see into the natural world by offering us a perspective of the rest of nature. This walkway exhibit opened in 2015 and it's wheelchair accessible. Did you know that 81% of the wilderness in U.S. East Coast is found in the Adirondacks? The Adirondacks is incredibly wild with vast forests, 3,000 lakes, 46 mountain peaks above 4,000 feet tall, with 55 species of mammals and 218 species of birds found in the Adirondacks. The Wild Center was a new attraction in the Adirondacks. It was conceived in August 1998 when a group of friends decided that they want to exhibit the natural world of the Adirondacks. In 1999, the organization became official. It was named Natural History Museum of the Adirondacks and it got its legal status as a museum from the state of New York. And in 2006, the name was officially changed to the Wild Center. The mission of the Wild Center is to ignite an enduring passion for the Adirondacks, where people and nature can thrive together and offer an example to the world. In this exhibit, you can spend time with live animals like myriad fish, turtles, river otters, 
and different plant species, all found in the wilderness of the Adirondacks. If you're wondering, the word Adirondack is thought to have come from the Mohawk word ha de ronda meaning eaters of tree. The Adirondacks draw more tourists than the Grand Canyon. It is estimated that at least 7 million people visited the Adirondack Mountains and parked annually. Why is it not a national park? The Adirondack Park is actually made up of both public and private land. 50% of the land around the Adirondack Park is privately owned. 2.5 million acres of the park has been set aside by the New York State for conservation. This is the only forest reserve that is protected under its state constitution in the U.S. The private owners are, however, under the regulatory category that prevents them from deforestation and further development. And this is our favorite exhibit at the Wild Center. It's forest music. It's an immersion on arts, nature, and music.
The reason why I decided to go to the Adirondacks is I saw this photo of a mountain cliffside coaster. And I've always wanted to ride a mountain coaster in New Hampshire. So I think this is a way to check off one of the adventures on my bucket list. The cliffside coaster at Mount Van Hovenberg. This is the longest coaster ride in United States. It's almost 8 minutes long. It runs for 1.4 miles. The coaster follows the alignment of the 1932 and 1980 Olympic bobsled track as it descends the mountain. The views are amazing. And the curbs will get your heart pounding. You'll see. These guys here are hikers going to the summit of Mount Van Havenberg. Here's the fun part. Bobsled, a very different sports really. And at Lake Placid they took place on two separate runs. Now this is the Mount Van Havenberg Bob Run, essentially the same course as in 1932, but now refrigerated and lightning fast. About a mile long, it enables sleds to reach speeds of 70 miles an hour or more. Crashes were frequent in training, and there were some wild ones in competition. Watch the West German two-man sled, almost flipping. Right there. The Canadian ah! four-man, turning over on the finish curve. Fortunately, no one was seriously injured. Watch now as 49-year-old Carl Eric Eriksson of Sweden, the oldest competitor in the game, ah! crashes and loses a brakeman just before the famous zigzag curve. There they were, crashing out of control. The brakeman being dragged, but finally breaking loose. Eriksson controlling the sled and finishing the course. Ah! Eric Scherer, the favorite, proved that the faith in him was not misplaced. He won the two-man competition with four virtuoso drives like these. In the two-man, it was really a driver's work. Ah! Eric Scherer, a real champion. Howard Seiler had the best finish for an American in 16 years, finishing fifth in the two-man. Ah! And another American sled was sixth. Very respectable showing. Ah! In the four-man, Bob Hickey drove a sled in which Willie Davenport, a summer gold medalist, and Jeff Gadley, a decathlete, rode in the middle. They could do no better than 12th. Meinhard Neymar of East Germany won both bobsled gold medals in Innsbruck four years ago. This time, he won only the bronze in the two-man, but in the four-man, he was the dominant figure from the start. Neymar, a 39-year-old former javelin thrower, had a big, strong crew who excelled in starting technique. On their first run, they broke the one-minute barrier on the course, and on the third run, they were destined to do even better. Kurt Gowdy with Paul Lemmy. Look at the rhythm of all three men getting in that sled. You have to get in very tenderly so that they don't jar it from side to side. Meinhard Neymar right down the middle of the track right now. At a 483 ball, 479 has been the best starting time today. He'll make that up with those few fractions of a second. He's making them up right here by keeping the sled nice and clean. There's something about the sleds different than the rest. Just right now on the four-man events, their sled is aerodynamically designed unlike any others on the mountain. Let's see what kind of a split time he has going into Shady. <laughs> On the next run, he has a minute at a 32.67, so he's ahead of his one minute mark. He's attacking that course, and he's really flying here as he goes through the S turns approaching the zigzag corner. Watch it. Mount Van Hovenberg is a U.S. Olympic training center for Nordic skiing and sled sports.
and you can also hike the mountain which takes about 2 hours to reach the summit. Speaking of hiking, we hiked with Twister that afternoon by our hotel. I realized this is probably the best part of the trip. Zero expense, it's free, beautiful outdoor, immersing ourselves with the beauty of nature. And listening to the sound of the river. This is our last night at the Adirondacks. My only regret is, I wish we had more time.